Welcome to the first episode of the Techno Wizards podcast. For those of you who don't know, we are the Techno Wizards team 16458 and FTC team located in San Antonio, Texas. My name is Vincent. And I'm Aditya. And today we are joined by Sofia Gravani. <coughs> Sofia has been in first for seven years, and during those years, she was captain of the FTC team Incognito and was also on FRC for a couple of seasons. During her first, uh, during her six FTC seasons, her team won the Inspire Award at the state championship four times, second place Inspire twice, and was on the winning alliance twice. Their team also won first place think in their division in the 2023 World Championships. Sophia was also a Dean's List Award winner in 2021, and FIRST has shaped her life and inspired her to pursue a career in mechanical engineering. Today's conversation will be on Sophia's Dean's List experiences and some tips and tricks about the process. So the first question is, how did you get involved in FIRST? Um, yeah, that's a great question. So I got involved in FTC when I was in sixth grade. Um, I joined a community team um, started by just a volunteer who wanted to start an FTC team. And it was an all girls team of seven girls. Um, one boy joined, but then he quit when he found out that it was all girls. Um, and uh, I didn't expect FTC to have such a big presence in my life because I never like saw myself doing robotics or saw myself being involved in that. But my mom was like, okay, you have to, to commit for at least a month and see if you like this. And then I went to my first FTC competition. And during that time, you know, we were all sixth grade girls up against high schoolers. We didn't know what we were doing and we were really nervous. Um, and so I forgot to turn the robot on for our first match, um, co completely going in blind. And, you know, we just stood there the whole match with our robot off just watching everybody else score. Um, and I was expecting as we walked back for the whole team to be really mad at me and like, you know, be like, Sophia, why didn't you turn the robot on? You know, you're the reason we lost the league meet and stuff. But instead everybody was like really supportive. They were like, we're moving past this, we're moving forward. And that kind of made me fall in love and see how at first and FTC is not about winning as much as it is about coming together, learning stuff and building teamwork. So. Yeah, that's kind of my start in first, one of my first experiences in first and why I continue to love it and do it. And what 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 have been like the most memorable experiences that you've had in the program? Um, I would say, well, I guess the most like shining moments have been like winning and, you know, going to a world with my team and winning there and also um, winning Dean's List. But I think like, honestly, if I had to answer that, I would say those moments like, when it's like midnight and you're working on the robot, you guys probably know those a lot. Um, yeah. You know, trying to get a part working and you finally see auto work or you finally see something that you've spent like months, or not months, like weeks designing in CAD be put all together and assembled. So I think those are my favorite moments. So it's like the little moments that like make yeah. the difference. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree with that too. Yeah. All right. So for uh, viewers out there who don't know what Dean's List is, uh, could you explain? Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. It's been a while since I've been like completely asked about this, but let me think. Dean's List is an award that students and that it, it's like one of the only individual um, high achieving awards in FIRST um, for FTC and FRC students to win based on their contributions to their team technical and um, through outreach. So um, 10 students are chosen every year from F. TC to win and 10 students are chose every year from FRC to win and for me I advance through my um, state and then to world but I know a lot of um, students who win go through like league state more like more qualifying competitions to make it to the world stage. And was being like a Dean's List winner something that you were like striving for or? Um, you know I never really thought about it. Um, I, I mean it was something that I guess um, I like decided to apply for in my junior year and stuff like that. But it was something that I learned about when I first joined the program in like sixth grade. And I looked at those people on stage and I was like, wow, I, I like th that could never happen to me, you know? Um, and so I didn't really expect to win at the state level. And for the Dean's List celebration, I thought there was like, you know, no shot at all. Um, so I went and was completely stunned. I, I was the first, I think, since they called in al alphabetical order, my last name starts with Burbano. So I was the first um, winner they called. And I was just like, is this, a, is this a dream? I didn't expect it at all. 
So yeah. So like, what were some of the individual like contributions that helped you be nominated to be in the dean's list, and like, how were you nominated in the first place? Um, so I was nominated for Dean's List. I think it was, it was because there were only, so I was nominated in my junior year and there were only two people who were juniors on my team, me and my mm -hmm. sister. Um, so we were both nominated because, um, our team always tries to make the effort to nominate, um, every junior we can. Um, so it wasn't necessarily a, and considering there's not that many people on our FTC team, I think it's ranged from around like five to at the most eight. Um, it wasn't really a, something I had to strive for to be nominated. Um, but yeah, the process of kind of um, being nominated and stuff like that was pretty, a little nerve wracking at first because I had to do an interview um, and stuff like that. But yeah, it was. Okay, cool. so then once you actually got nominated, like how did you find the person to write your recommendation letter and what would you want to look for during that process of writing the letter? So my process was a little different because um, the I don't really have a coach of my team except for my mom. Mm -hmm. So she knew what I had done and she wrote that and then she passed that <clears> off <throat> to several different people who were kind of involved with our team and knew of us to just verify that what she had said was right, you know, not to kind of involve any of those ethical implications with that. Um, and I kind of just kind of compiled everything I'd done in my, I think it had been five years or six years at that point in FTC. And um, she kind of, you know, wrote what was So she kind of knew everything like? What yeah, put, so yeah. I was lucky at that point, but I know that um, other people who have won have kind of just compiled what they've done. Mm -hmm. And in um, nominating other people on the team and being involved in that process, my advice is always, um, write down everything that you think you've done that is important and crucial in the answering the questions process and the nominator can kind of take those and write them into how they see them. So what do you think like what, are, what do you think are like the most important things to be included in the recommendation letter? Um, I would say um, some of the most important things are hours. Um, so if you can keep track of that or compile or remember mm -hmm. the hours maybe you spent building, the hours that you spent um, doing outreach, also the number of outreaches you've done, if you've done a lot, um, the number of build meetings you've done, um, and also probably like key impact points. So um, maybe kind of showing how you took something that you love in the program and share that with others. So I guess for me, I um, took, um, like learning CAD and I share that with my region by holding a lot of workshops. Um, so stuff like that. Okay. All right. So moving on to the interview. So like, how did you prepare for the interview? Um, I wish I had a better answer. I didn't, uh, really prepare until about, and I probably wouldn't recommend it. Well, I think it went pretty well, <coughs> but, um, I didn't really prepare until the interview until about, uh, 10 minutes before. And I, kind of basically what I did was I read the nominated letter and I kind of just touched on all of the points um, that I that had been written in the letter and I kind of remembered them and kind of centered those in my head. So when an uh, interviewer asked me a question about them, because normally the interviewers either want to clarify your um, nominating letter or they want to ask you something that kind of furthers what they're looking for based on those questions. So I kind of, um, number one, tried to look at all the questions that had been answered in the nominating letter and kind of add to those mentally. And also I tried to look at all the things that had been listed in the letter and kind of think about um, centering those. So in case the interviewer asked me about them, I can answer them better. So what was your like experience with the interview? Was it like more like a conversation or? Yeah, so my interview was on Zoom. Um, and I think it only, there was like a specific time limit. I think it was 10 minutes. Um, and so it was very kind of clinical. I felt comfortable because I had seen the people before at like different, you know, outreach volunteering events. Um, and they kind of just asked questions to further 
um, elaborate on some of the things I listed in my nominating letter. And they also asked me like, what does first mean to me? How do I see first um, being continued in my life? And kind of, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Do you like remember like specific like questions they asked and like, how did you answer them? Um, I think the most specific question I remember at them asking was, um, what is your favorite? I think it was, what is your favorite part about being in first? And I answered that by talking about, um, how much joy and fun I found volunteering with other people at first events, vol volunteering at FLL events and stuff like that. Um, and they also asked me to clarify my contributions to my team. Um, so I clarified, um, that by talking about how I helped lead mechanical and writing the engineering portfolio and being the captain of my team. And then I think the last question I remember them asking was, how do I want to kind of keep sustainability within my team? And I answered that by talking about how I always teach my team members and try to um, teach what I've learned forward. And that was, those are the questions I remember. So what were some of the things that you did that helped you stand out from the other applicants? Um, let me think. I don't know if it was necessarily, I think I would say probably the things that helped me stand out the most, let me find my amazing letter, were probably the amount of hours that I had um, kind of done in first, in terms of outreach, let me check, I think was written. Um, let's see. I think it would be probably, I think it was 3000 hours of outreach that I had done in my time in first. Um, I think some of the things that I had done was kind of starting a lot of teams. I started, um, let me see one. Sorry, I, I'm trying to count the ones I kind of forget. I think it was six junior FLL Explore teams, and then I helped lead mm -hmm. um, two FLL teams. Um, I would say probably raising money for my team. I had done a lot of that. Um, let me see. Um, so, like, keeping track of things also, like, really helps out for that. Yeah, keeping track of things, I would recommend. Um, <laughs> because I kind of forget everything that I did. It had been a long time. Um, I think um, part of that was also, as I mentioned on before, um, teaching CAD workshops. Um, I think probably another reason why I had one was the fact that um, maybe my team had had, um, I'd led my team to winning um, a lot of awards in um, Inspire Award and um, in the robot game. Um, I think perhaps another reason was that at least getting past the um, state championship in First Nevada was that I had been a presence in a lot of the FLL volunteering events, a lot of FTC, FRC. Um, and so the people, um, at least like the, some of the mentors and stuff for Nevada really touched on how I um, helped uh, people in Nevada learn CAD and stuff like that. So I would say those are probably the main reasons I won, um, as well as kind of longevity. I'd been in first for um, six years. So once you like became a finalist and like won the Dean's List, what were like the opportunities that you gained from that? Um, let me think. So it was really cool. I got to go up to New Hampshire and um, I got to uh, talk to Dean Kamen. I got to meet him. I got to talk to a lot of the suppliers at first. Um, and I got to um, see, we got to tour MIT. We got to tour, what else did we get to tour? We got to tour Dean Kamen's house, which was really cool. We got to see all his machines. Um, and I think, and then we got to go to the first headquarters, which is really cool. We filmed the kickoff video. Um, and I think most of what that, summit did was kind of give me more confidence for, I guess, I never really thought about the college applications process. I never really thought about um, kind of 
where I saw myself um, within that. And so it kind of gave me confidence for going forward with that. Um, and also, I just loved meeting all, all the other Dean Plus winners. I would say that mm-hmm. was the most special part, um, meeting other people who dedicated so much of their time to first, meeting other people who like loved the same things I loved was probably the best part. So, yeah, when you, like, connected with other people, do you still have, like, some contact or connections with people from the Dean's List? Yeah, I talk, I talk to them all the time still. Um, and I consider some of them some of my closest friends. So, yeah, definitely, for sure. So, do you think that the Dean's List um, helped with your college admissions? And what college do you think that it would help with? Um, I would say, I don't know if it necessarily, like, helped a ton because I have uh, a unique aspect in that um, I have a twin sister who also applied for colleges at the same time I did, Mm -hmm. um, but she didn't win Dean's List. Um, And so um, with that, she'd done a lot of similar things that I had done though. And so with that, I think we got into probably pretty comparable um, colleges. I think what's more important is the things that you did because of Dean's List and the reason why you went Dean's List, which will help you. Which would help you get into good colleges. Um, yeah, I think it definitely does help. Um, I'm again, I don't know how much it helped or anything like that, but I would say probably more of the reason that you went dean's list. So like more of the things that like add up to the dean's list rather than just the dean's list winner. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the last question: uh, How did first shape you as a person? Um, I would say first shaped me as a person um, because it taught me how to deal with a lot of situations that are hard and that um, require, you know, grace, that require compassion, um, thinking on your feet. Um, I would say first has taught me how to deal with pressure, pressure from, you know, being on the field, pressure in terms of time, pressure from other people. Um, first has taught me how to build a connection. It has taught me how to, you know, welcome in the people that you see maybe standing on the corner at one of your first team meetings and get them excited and happy and vibrant about learning about robotics. Um, I would say it has taught me so many technical skills. Um, I like, if you told me that like sixth grade me that I could just sit down and build a robot and build an arm and do all of that, I would have laughed because it's something that you don't think you can do until you, you know, start doing it and start learning how to do it. Um, and first has also taught me how to, you know, speak to other people, how to speak to companies, how to reach out to other engineers to, and how to learn what you need to learn. I think, you know, especially considering that so far my education is just, and my learning has just been through school, which is the books they give me, you know, what my teachers tell me to do first has provided another dimension to that and that you have to, like take the reins yourself and learn and that's kind of really invaluable to me well thank you for coming on our podcast uh we greatly appreciate you and good luck with your uh, college and professional career thank you thank you so much for listening to the techno wizards podcast i hope this conversation has given you more insight into the dean's list process we actually had a dean's list finalist on last year's podcast and the process was for him was much more different And what I've learned from this is, yes, Dean's List is a great award, but it's not just about attaining the award. It's also the impact you have on FIRST that truly matters in being passionate about FIRST. Dean's List is like just the icing on the cake. And if you don't win Dean's List, it won't matter in the long run. All you'll know is that you still have a passion for body since Reddit. Thank you so much for listening, and we hope to catch you in the next episode.